Okay guys, welcome to module one. In this module, our expert will cover creating and connecting your ManyChat account. So get ready to take some notes and let's jump right in. Okay guys, so let's get started with setting up a ManyChat account. First, go to the ManyChat website, then click the Get Started Free button. Then, sign in with Facebook and give ManyChat permission to access and manage your page. Please note that ManyChat only works for a Facebook page and not for a personal Facebook account. Now that you have connected your Facebook page to ManyChat, the dashboard should look like this. Now, let's set up our greeting message. On the dashboard, click the settings on the side menu. Then, type in your greeting text inside the text box. The greeting text is used to describe your business or let visitors know how your messenger bot can help them. You are limited to 160 characters but you can add emojis to make it more welcoming. Once you're happy with your greeting message, click Save. To preview your greeting text, click the link that says See How It Looks. A pop-up will appear and you'll see how it looks on a mobile screen. Remember to always check that it looks good on the mobile screen because a lot of your users will be interacting with your page using their phones. Now let's set up the welcome message. Go to Automation on the side menu, then click Welcome Message. It should be the third one from the options. This is how the setup page looks like. At the top part, you have the option to disable and enable the welcome message. You have the option to preview and publish it. And then the three dots button at the end is for the options such as rename, duplicate, copy to another page, delete, and revert to publish. We haven't published our welcome message yet, so subscribers cannot see anything on their end. Now let's add our welcome message. Type your welcome message in the text box. Let's add a placeholder to personalize the message. To do this, click anywhere inside the box, then select the second icon from the gray bar that appears. It looks like two curly brackets with a dot inside. Make sure your cursor is in the right location inside the text box. Click the placeholder that you like to use and you'll see it appear highlighted in blue. To make your welcome message friendly, let's add emojis. Click anywhere inside the text box again, then select the smiley icon on the gray bar. Click the emoji that you like to use and it should appear in your message. Here are some popular emojis that you can use. The message automatically saves and a preview should be visible on the mobile screen on the right. Once done, click Publish at the top right corner. This is the message your subscribers will see if they click the Get Started button or sends you a message for the first time. Now let's set up our default reply. Go to Automation again, then click Default Reply. It should be the second one from the options. You should see a template message inside the text box. You can replace this message, then click anywhere outside the text box to save it. The default reply is sent when the bot doesn't know what to answer. For example, if there are no keyword matches, you can suggest your users to type a keyword or provide them a menu. Next, let's learn how to use keywords. Go to Automation, then click Keywords. It should be the fourth one from the options. Keywords are used to automate your bot replies when a user asks something. This is useful for commonly asked questions. The first function on this page is the active and inactive toggle switch. This shows which rule is currently being used. Next is the rule. The two default ones are the subscribe and unsubscribe rule. When a user sends the keyword start or subscribe, they will receive the subscribe to bot message as a reply. Then, as an additional action, they will be subscribed to your bot. The second one is the unsubscribe rule. 
When the user sends the keyword stop or unsubscribe, they will receive the unsubscribe from the bot message and no action is necessary to be set since they have already unsubscribed. Now let's add our own keyword. Click the add new keyword at the top right corner, then type the keyword you want to use. Then click create keyword. Next, let's set up our automated reply. Click create new reply to compose a new message or select an existing one from the pre-made templates. Then click select this flow. If you want to change the rule, just click message is and you'll see the available rule. Message is only accepts keyword that are exactly specified. This rule is very strict. It's not case sensitive, but if there are additional letters, spaces, or symbols, then reply or actions will not be triggered. Message contains is more flexible. It can recognize keyword in sentences. Just be careful using short keywords that can be mistaken for the actual keyword that you want. Finally, you can also set additional action by selecting from the drop-down menu when you click the Add Action. If you want to delete an existing rule, click the bin on the right side. Hey folks, welcome to Module 2. In this module, our expert will give us an overview of the ManyChat platform. So get ready to take some notes and let's jump right in. All right, guys, so let's do a quick overview of the ManyChat platform. ManyChat is a service that allows you to create chatbots for Facebook Messenger. A chatbot or a bot is a series of automated conversations that can answer common questions from your customers. This could be to explain what your products or services are. You can also use it to gather information about your customers and nurture them towards a sale. Now let's do a quick tour of the ManyChat dashboard. On the left side, you'll see the menu. The first one on the menu is the dashboard. This is where you'll see the overall statistics of your subscribers and unsubscribers. You'll also see here the link to your bot. Whenever your customer accesses this link, they will be redirected to your messenger. Next is the audience tab. This is where you'll see the profile of your subscribers. On the right are the list filtered according to a tool each user opted in or subscribed to. We have the tags, widgets, sequences, and ads. Next, let's go to the live chat. This tool allows you to communicate with your subscribers in one place. Since we can connect the bot to multiple channels such as Facebook Messenger, SMS, and email, we can have conversations with each of our customers via the live chat. Next, let's talk about growth tools. This is where you can set up a widget or an ad to help you bring lots of subscribers into your bot. Next, we have broadcasting. This is similar to a message flow. This can consist of one message or several messages linked together. And under this tool are broadcasts and paid messages. Next is the automation. This is where we set up the automatic replies based on our customer's interaction with our bot. We have the main menu. This is where we can set up and suggest options for our audience. The default reply where we can set up personalized response when the bot does not know what to answer. Next is the welcome message or the message that they see after subscribing. Next is the keywords where we customize replies based on keywords used by our customers. We also have the sequences. 
It's a many chat feature that allows you to subscribe users from your audience to the chain of messages that can be separated by delays of different lengths. The last one is the rules. This is where you can set up a trigger and when it happens, the bot needs to perform specific actions or action. Now let's talk about the ManyChat flow or flow builder. Think of it as a visual map of all the messages, actions, and transitions between them. It gives you a bird's eye view of the whole interaction without having to switch between single messages. Now let's do an overview of the main bot settings. At the Generals tab, you'll first see the Greeting Text section. This is the message your user will see before they start an interaction with your bot. This may be a brief description or a lead test to make your future subscribers message your page. Next is the card URL shortener. This feature requires a pro subscription and this records your message's CTR or click-through rate data. Next we have the bot time zone. All exported data will be based on the time zone that you have set here. Next, we have the clone to another page. This transfers all contents of your bot to another page. This is useful if you want to reuse some of the contents that you have already made. Next, we have the refresh Facebook permissions. Messenger platform can unexpectedly drop page permission or admin password change. In case of any trouble with content sending or service setup, you can use this refresh permission to gain a smooth access again. Then we have keyboard input. You may disable keyboard input to make the persistent menu the only way for a person to interact with your messenger bot. Then we have audience visibility. This hides all deleted and unsubscribed users in audience. Lastly, we have the disable bot for this page. This feature disconnects many chat from your Facebook page. It does not delete any content or subscribers. And you can easily gain access again by connecting your Facebook to ManyChat again. Don't forget to cancel Active Pro subscription first before disabling the bot. Now let's talk about the Live Chat tab. You can choose between two live chat behaviors. The first option starts a live chat session with any messages from a user. The second one requires a button or a quick reply before it starts a live chat session. Then we have personas in live chat. This is for a more personalized conversations with your customer. This allows your users to see the name and profile picture of the agent that they are talking to. Then we have close all open conversations. This allows you to mark all open conversations as done. Next, we have the sound notifications. This enables or disables in-app sound alerts. Lastly, we have the snippet. This allows you to create canned responses and send them in a live chat conversation in one click. Now on to the Grow Tools tab. First, we have the widget localization. This localizes your widgets by choosing a language from the list. English US is the chosen language by default. Authorized website allows you to add websites to your authorized list. Next, we have branding. Here, you can turn off ManyChat branding in embeddable widgets, overlay widgets, and landing page growth tools. Let's now go to the notifications tab. The first section is the email address where notifications will be sent. Next, we have the frequency of the subscriber's report. You can choose daily, weekly, or monthly. Then we have live chat notifications. This enables or disables a range of live chat notifications to help you support your audience and track leads. The notify admins action is enabled if you want to receive notifications when a user performs a specific action in your broadcasts, welcome messages, opt-in messages, and so on. Lastly, we have the messenger notifications. Opt into your bot to be able to receive bot notifications in Messenger and to preview bot content. Let's now go to Custom Fields.
Custom Fields allows you to create custom fields which can store any information about your subscribers. On the other hand, Bot Fields allows you to store your bot data and set the values depending on your subscribers' actions. They look like custom user fields but can store values which are related to your bot. For example, text, numbers, and formulas, date and time. Up next is the Tags tab. Here, you can create new tags and delete the ones you no longer need. A tag is a way to segment your subscribers. You can add and remove tags from users to indicate that they are a part or not a part of a certain group. We now go to the Users tab. Here, you can manage the admins of your ManyChat account. All users who have access to a particular bot within ManyChat have one of four user roles that define what sections of the ManyChat are available to them and can be changed. Then we have the Payments tab. On this tab, you can connect Stripe account, select Currency type for your Buy button, and select Payments Notification type. Order history for all purchases can also be found here. Next, we have the Integrations tab. You'll be able to set up third-party integrations using this tab. Next is the SMS Marketing tab. This tab is for keeping engaged with people who have expressed interest in your brand using SMS. Please be aware that it is currently available in the U.S. market only. Next is the Email Marketing tab. Similar to SMS marketing, this is to keep your subscribers engaged using the email channel. The next tab is for billing. This tab manages your subscription. You can cancel or upgrade your subscription via this tab. Up next is the API tab. Here, you are able to generate a token to start using ManyChat API. The next tab is the Installed Templates. Under this tab, you will find all the templates that install to your page. Here you can see the contents of the templates and also customize some of its parameters such as address, phone number, and so on. Finally, we have the Logs tab. In this section, you can see if there are any issues with your bots functioning. Inside the logs, you will find a list of errors and fixes as they occur. When the issue is fixed, you'll see success note in the logs. Now, let's talk about templates. Templates are basically a pre-designed bot structure that you can use so you don't have to start from scratch to do your message and action flows. You can select from any featured templates here, read the About section, and click Install when you're ready. The second to the last on our menu is the My Profile page. This is where you can add a Facebook page that you manage or you want to switch to. And you can also create your own template. The last tab is where you can generate your API token. Now, if you need additional information, you can simply click the help link at the bottom. You can select to read the documentation, watch the video tutorials, hire an agency, submit a ticket, or maybe join the ManyChat community. All right, welcome to Module 3. In this module, our expert will show us how to set up our first broadcast. So get ready to take some notes and let's jump right in. Okay, so let's get started with setting up our first broadcast. Go to Broadcasting on your menu, then click Add New Broadcast at the upper right corner. Then select Messenger. On the right side, you can switch to Basic Builder or the Flow Builder. Let's use Flow Builder to have a better visual of our broadcast flow. Click Starting Step and a sidebar will automatically appear. Select other as our content type for this example. Then, let's type in our message.
the message should read, Hey there, first name. Get my free 5-day Christmas fitness bootcamp series. Are you interested? Then let's add the two options. Yes, I'm interested and no thank you. Now let's connect our option to an action. Drag your mouse from the first option and then select Start Flow. Click to select a flow, then choose from your pre-made templates, then click Select this flow. Let's do the same for the second option, but this time we'll choose Send Message. Then let's add a button, Learn More. Now let's connect the button to the same flow. Once all is set, the next step is for our broadcast settings. Select the content type. We have three options here, non-promotional or mixed content. Next is the promotional content only, and then we have the follow-up type. Remember that the broadcast options are subject to the Facebook Messenger platform policy. To avoid getting suspended, we need to follow this. Then we have targeting. You can target each of your broadcasts by the following conditions. Select from the list below. Next, we have Schedule Broadcast. Start sending your broadcast immediately or schedule it to be sent on a particular date and time. Next, we have Time Zone Settings. Send all at the same time delivers your broadcast immediately. Use time travel to schedule time according to your subscriber's time zone. And lastly, use limit sending time to send message as soon as possible once user's daytime in his current time zone matches desired delivery hours. Now we go to the notification settings. This only applies to mobile notifications. Regular push notification will make a sound and display a phone notification. Only one regular notification triggers only one regular notification and the rest will be on silent mode. Only two regular notification triggers only two regular notifications and the rest will be in silent mode. Silent push will display a phone notification without a sound and silent broadcast will not display any notification at all. Once you're happy with the setup, click send now or schedule message at the top right corner. Now let's learn about the many chat sequences. The sequence is a feature that allows subscribers to receive chain of message at a given period of time. We can start by going to automation on the menu, then choose sequences. Then click the add new sequence at the upper right, type a name for your sequence, and then click create. You'll automatically see the pre-made message templates. You can change the sequence send time by clicking on the schedule, then choose another date or time you prefer. If you need to add a new message to your sequence, just click the Add Message button. On the right, you'll also see the analytics of your sequence. Send tells you the number of users that received your message. Clicks tells you the number of users who clicked a button on your message. And the last two are the computations for your open rate and your click-through rate. Now let's talk about flows. On the sidebar menu just after the automation rules, you'll find a flows folder. Flow Builder is a visual editor of all messages, actions, and transitions between them. Let's have a quick overview of the flow manager's elements. At the top, you'll find a search bar to search flows by a name. Next, we have the add new flow button. We also have the toggle view. Click Toggle View button to switch between list and thumbnails. Then we have the folders to help you organize your flows. Next, we have the smart folders to store your current bot automations. On the middle, you'll see your flow information, which contains the name, the channels of your flow, the number of runs, and when it was modified. The three dots on the right open the context menu that allows you to perform actions. Rename changes the flow name. Duplicate clones your flow to the same folder. 
We also have the share this flow, copy to another page, and delete, which moves your flow to the trash. Hello, and welcome to this course on Messenger Marketing. In this course, we're going to cover how to increase your reach with Messenger bots. This course is divided into three modules. Module 1 covers creating and connecting your ManyChat account. Module 2 gives us an overview of the ManyChat platform. And Module 3 covers setting up your first broadcast. By the time this course is over, you'll know how to effectively use Messenger bots for your business. So without further ado, let's dive into the first module.